Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is episode 115 here on the Oakley Podcast Trucking Business and Family. So we've had a couple of requests to learn a little bit more about the hopper division. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I dragged Mr. Brian Hill away from his desk to do this with me to talk a little bit about the history of the hopper division. Actually, kind of when it got started and how it got started and what's going on with it today too and how we've how we've gone from uh, nothing to where we are today uh, so we got a little bit of that going on we're going to get in depth with that uh, but first let's see first of all let's do our oakley update sponsored by arrow truck sales keith wilson at arrow truck sales in springfield missouri is currently offering a thousand dollars off your first month's payment when you finance with transport funding or a thousand dollars off the truck price if you bring your own financing they're also discounting the cost of an extended warranty by five hundred dollars Arrow Truck Sales has been a longtime partner with Oakley Trucking, and that's because they specialize in first-time truck buyers. They don't do any leases. They have the best used trucks money can buy because used trucks is all they do. They don't sell any new trucks. And the biggest reason that Arrow and Oakley are partners is service after the sale. It is very important to us at Oakley that when we refer you to a company, that they are a good company with good people. They do what they say, and they understand our requirements. So give Keith a call at 573-216-6047 for a good used truck and tell him you heard about it on the Oakley Podcast. Uh, a couple things on the Oakley update. One is Miss Wendy said the 2290s are due, and could you please read this or tell everybody? So, if you don't know what a 2290 is, it's your heavy road use tax. It's that $550 that you have to pay the IRS every year just on a truck. So, it's due between July the 1st and August the 31st. Uh, you can start pre-filling now if you would like. The website that we recommend, that Miss Wendy recommends, is expresstrucktax.com, and they're very usually user-friendly. Uh, the cost will be $550 to the IRS, and that will need to be paid by your routing number slash account number. Online fee to express truck tax will be $14.90, and that's using a credit or debit card. Uh, and, of course, as always, Wendy said, give her a call, her or Megan Cummins, if you have any questions on your 2290. The other thing, I always like to pass along good information if I get it. And um, I believe it was Russell gave me some good information yesterday about uh, we had a customer uh, calling, bragging on Mr. Miss Shante Worth. As a matter of fact, she was on a podcast not she too was. long ago. Yeah, and yep. it was the customer at Strategic Materials, Sarasota, Florida. Uh, just bragged on her of how courteous she was and how excellent a job she did. And uh, I think, she is amazing. I think she always. If does y'all haven't met her, you need to. She yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So that's always good to get some good information out there um, to you guys. Y'all, y'all always. I mean, we we get some of those and we just don't tell you enough so we're trying to do a better job at that what's going on brian hill oh another beautiful day trying to get through this friday isn't it a dandy i'm telling you we have so many loads right now that we just can't get them all covered at all times we have enough people you know so here we go it's a scramble hounding hounding recruiting let me tell you this i've been here so long that having more loads than you have trucks is a much more of a blessing than having more trucks than you have loads isn't that a great job, it's, man? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Well, you know, we got to talking about doing a podcast on this hopper division. Um, we talked about it a couple times, but we got to uh, talking about it the other day, and I actually asked you, I was thinking, you know, how this thing all got started, and I started going through my mind trying to figure it out and how we came about with 250 hoppers that we have now or whatever. Uh, and I got to – so the first thing I did – well, not the first thing, but one of the things I did, I went in there and uh, I talked to Mr. Benny mm-hmm. to see if he could remember. And, of course, he, I said, you know, I think and I told him it, it was around 02, 03, 04, somewhere in there uh, that we started the hopper division. He said, no, we started in the mid-'80s. I said, really? 
No, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what he said. He started in the mid '80s. I said, "Well, how many did you have?" He said, "Oh, probably eight or ten. <laughs> I said, "Okay." <laughs> he said, "But, uh, but they didn't last long." So mm-hmm. he had. Uh, they did try it. I think back in yeah. the mid '80s, which was well. That's the first time I've heard that up. story. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. I didn't know that either. But he said they did have hoppers back in the mid '80s, but didn't last long. Right. You know, and. Uh, and went on with the rolling with the dumps and then got into the pneumatics. And then we get into the hoppers later on. Yep. You remember how – well, first of all, you've been here a long time. 18 years. 18 years. And you've uh, you've been on a podcast before. I have, yes, so sir. So if um, everybody needs a refresher on who Brian Hill is, you have to go back some podcasts and listen to his yep. history. But he's been here 18 years. He knows what's going on. And uh, ba- basically all those been in the hopper. Every uh, almost every year, I did do uh, sand for a little bit. Um, of course, when I first started, me and Kobe were doing end dumps and hoppers at the same time. Uh, we had very few hoppers at that time. We were running back and forth out of Memphis, going up to like Bowling Green, Kentucky, Lebanon, Tennessee. Sometimes we'd go over to Iowa, but that's what those guys did every single day. You know, that was we got. A, I talked to Kobe about it too, just to verify that. Yep. You know, because it started back in. So that would have been 04. So yes, when you sir. started, we already were doing it? Yes, sir. Okay, so somewhere in there, 03 or something, um, your man, Winston Guest. Yes, sir. Uh, what's he go by? He goes by Yamaha. Yamaha. And he's been with us a long time. Oh, a long time. He uh, he started doing that run, and that was for Cargill. Yes, sir. And he was, uh, he was stepping it up a notch with that. He, he did. He actually helped attract a lot of the business to us because he had already been doing some of that. Before he came? I'm almost sure that's what, if I remember correctly, I'm almost sure that's what happened. He, he was right. doing a little bit of stuff, and then um, <clears throat> then he we got that with Kobe, and I think he got the rest of it. Him and Benny went out and got the rest of it because he had been doing some of it. I'm almost sure that's right. Yeah, because it led into a little bit more. Yes, sir. It got pretty big. We yeah. got up to... I think when I got here, there was probably four to six trucks doing it, running back and forth. And at one time, we had got up to ten or twelve that were doing it all over the place. That was uh, that was yeah, mostly from Memphis, but yes, then sir. it expanded to other. Oh yeah, coming out of other areas of the United States. Absolutely, we was doing stuff out of Iowa back down. Yeah. Um, we'd go. Seemed like we went everywhere back in that day. So you didn't go Pennsylvania. It didn't matter. You went and got it. I can remember that because you know me and Kobe, pretty good friends. Uh huh. And uh, I can remember hanging out with him on the weekends, and him and Ann were. Yep. Ann from Cargill. Yep. Ann from Cargill. Have you ever talked to her? She still. I haven't in, talked to her in quite a while. Is, no, it's she's still in business. Time. That uh, he stayed pretty busy. That clipboard with, was with ooh, her that was on our the life. weekends. Yes, sir. That was our <laughs> life. I know it. That was good, but man, it, and Winston, he he uh, he helped us out. Of course, then you had we had Winston Yamaha, David Hill, mm-hmm. David Light, mm-hmm. uh, Carlton Russell. Yep, Danny Troutman. Danny Troutman. Okay, Scott Danny. Golden. Danny's still with us, and yes, him sir. and Winston still with us. Yes, so. sir. Scott Golden. Okay. Yep. And that's uh, I think that's about it when I first started. They were uh, they were keeping it going. No, they were rocking it. I promise you. And then we uh, I do I was talking to Scott about that too, and he, and he reminded me we had to talk Benny into buying more hoppers. Yes, sir. And that took a while. He we he didn't you know we just kept hey let's buy five more. All right. And then finally he started buying a few. Yeah. Then we got up to I think uh, about twenty twenty five at one at one point. Uh, kind of cut it off a little bit, and that's when I just started slowly doing hopper bottoms. Is it? Yes, sir. Yeah, we started getting a little bit more stuff. We went back to doing some roofing granules. Had come in, we started doing stuff for Owens Corning, uh, more on a hopper bottom instead of an end dump. Um, we were doing stuff for Certainty down in uh, Dallas, um, so that just helped us be able to pick up more drivers, pick up more stuff around that area, and then it just kind of even expanded even more to where I had – 50 trucks yeah and then it was hey we need somebody else over there for him to to help him out and russell came over uh started helping me out he was doing both end dumps and hoppers at that time and uh 
to where it is now is like 220. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It is. I mean, it is. Crazy. Well, it's a good niche and for yes, us, I mean, it absolutely you know, dry bulk and you get some customers that couldn't take dumps. Right. But they could take a hopper. Right. Bottom drop. You yes, know? sir. So. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's helped a lot of guys to, for us to be able to attract a lot of guys in those areas, say Dallas, Oklahoma City, um, even out as far as North Carolina. We've got guys that run back and forth every day out of Moncure, North Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, you know, Hampton, Georgia, load right back out of Sarasota up to Atlanta. I mean, it's just, I mean, stuff that we would never even thought about doing back in those days. You know, you didn't really get them out of the region. If they got out of Texas or Oklahoma, you you didn't know what the heck to do. You were lost. No, you were done. You know, so, uh, but this has expanded so much. You know, why – why do you think that is? It's easy um, as far as what we feel uh, that most of our drivers do for us. Um, you know, they can uh, get under a chute, they roll the tarp back, start loading one half of the, the hopper, and then they start pull up a little bit or pull back, whatever the case may be at that time, and they start loading a little bit. They don't have to get out and start walking down on uh, scrap metal. They don't have yeah. to bounce around in the mud anywhere they don't have to run in and out of a scrap yard and ruin stuff like that you know pretty much every place you go to is concreted um and it's nice facilities where they go to so it makes it a little bit easier for us to be able to sell that um and plus people you know they go back and forth pretty much the same place a lot of the time so they get to know these people and it makes it a lot easier for them to go do their business yeah i think it's it's helped i tell you it's helped a lot with our older owner operators absolutely to be able to give them something that's not, you know, as demanding as a pneumatic tank or an end dump on them, the hoppers a little bit. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure there's guys out there thinking, oh, it's easy. That's easy for you to say sitting in there. But, right. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's a, it's definitely not easy, easy, but it's the no. easiest thing we have that's okay. given those guys an opportunity. And it's, it's helped us um, lease on women. Yo, absolutely. I have uh, – so I have Carol Ball that works for me. I have Shante that works for us um, or works for me. I have Teresa Thompson that uh, works for us and uh, Kim Umpress who's worked for us or works for us. All four of those ladies will, I mean, they can run circles around most men. They oh. are bad to the <laughs> bone. I mean, they flat out go. And they don't go home every weekend or anything like that. They stay out for three and four weeks at a time. Oh, really? You know, some of them even stay out for two months at a time. So it's so, uh it's it's helped us expand uh i think in the first 16 years i worked here we had one woman that, yeah. that pulled a hopper yeah um we actually had two the other one pulled sand when we was doing it up there uh, uh working for cow frack and stuff but and i guess since um you know we've we've created some dedicated routes that's helped a lot absolutely is that, does that help you guys also? There are a lot of guys that will come out, you know, that say, hey, I don't, when they start here, I only want to work four days a week. I only want to work five days a week. And then when they're going home every single day, hey, man, you got another load I can do? I want to go ahead and get the sixth one this week. Or, man, I just might as well stay out. I'm going home every day. My wife says the checks look amazing, so I'm going to just keep going. You know, so it's, uh, it's helped us be able to recruit a lot of people that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Yeah, it has helped in the recruiting side of it and, and the retention side of it. Yes, sir. I mean, they're so happy because they get to go home every day. And it makes us happy also, you know. Uh, they're not mad because their wives are home mm. missing them, their family's home missing them, you know. They still get to go home and see their families at some point, maybe not every day, uh, but, you know, three or four days a week at least. What's uh, – I mean, I don't mean you can talk about the good about it all day long. What's some of the negatives with the Hopper Division? What's some of the – the challenges well i guess it's a two-part question some of the negative for an owner operator doing the hopper and then some of the challenges that you dispatchers face so the main worries or the main challenges that a driver will have is going and waiting somewhere if they have to wait at 3 a.m for six to eight hours to get unloaded you know it's going to cut into their time to be able to get down there get unloaded say they go to dangerfield which is only 204 miles well they still sit at 3 a.m. for eight hours waiting to get loaded. Then they have to deadhead or take off down to Dangerfield to be able to get unloaded and try to make it back up to do another one by tomorrow, you know. And um, that's tough sometimes, you know. They want to get a good check. 
and don't get me wrong, they do get paid attention, but still it's not the same thing as going down the road. That's what these guys like to do. They like to get loaded, they like to go unload and, and come back and get another one, you know. Um, and a lot of times that happens for our hop, hopper bottoms, but the wait times are the main thing, I would think, for any hopper bottom driver. As far as the dispatching part of it, goes hand in hand. You know, we have set schedules that we have for these uh, roofing granules. Um, they have to load at a certain time, they have to deliver at a certain time. We don't always hit those marks and we got little windows that will help, but, you know, when they are delayed for six to eight hours at a customer, uh, man, you shut down a roofing granule plant and it's a bad situation. Uh, people start calling from all over the country trying to find yeah, it. Yeah, so, the, so they run into waiting time creates y'all having to change things on your end. Absolutely, yes, sir. Yeah, but it's it, uh, I mean, evidently it, we've been doing business with them for oh, yeah, umpteen, umpteen years. Yeah. There's so many I, changes, I, yeah, that I've that come and go through 3M or Dangerfield or Irving, Texas, you know, and some of them still work for the companies, they just work in different divisions, and they still call me like, Brian, what the heck's going on, you know, you know, it's uh, it feels pretty good actually because I've got to do this my whole time, I got trained by Kobe. You know, me and Kobe still work hand to hand on a lot of this stuff, and these people still call Kobe also. Uh, so it feels good that you still have that name out there with customers that you've been doing business with for over 18 years, and they trust you. You know, it feels good. Well, and we've had some customers longer than that. Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, they were here before I got here. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes a big difference. You know, you have them for that long. I mean, and and. You still got to give them the good customer service. So oh, absolutely! Yeah, we stress that all the time. Oh yes, sir. That's uh, uh, that's not something that's optional. What about the hauling the weight? Um, I know sometimes you know I tell our listeners about the uh, the advantage of hauling the weight is there's a fifteen cent bonus yes, that sir. they can get on the, all the loaded miles. It starts with uh, if you haul fifty to fifty-one thousand, you get an extra five cents on all the loaded miles for that load. Yes, sir. If you get fifty-one to fifty-two, then you get an extra ten. Right. And anything fifty-two plus, you get an extra fifteen cents on that load. Yes, sir. You'll see. Uh, you'll see guys starting to lighten up their trucks. I promise you, when yeah. you see that. And also, you know, a lot of these guys they work their butt off to try to get the weights on, so they get. A little bit extra but they know it also creates extra for oakley trucking man and that's that's one thing that i can say about our drivers man they they do their best for oakley trucking it's not just worried about hey i'm going to get this they want to make sure that we're taken care of too and that's a you know that's pretty much a blessing uh, when you've been here for so long and you've seen so many come and go but you have the group of men and women that work for you right now that really i mean they really care about what they do and who they work for well that that means a lot uh, <laughs> well, and and they, I would think they would because that's their bread and butter. Absolutely, you yeah, know, too. Yeah, yeah. I promise you, you short them on some weight, <laughs> you gonna hear about it. Yeah. I promise you, <laughs> and they will call you immediately, Brian. They won't put it on here, you know. But that's good. What's a weekend work like? Uh, it's tough right now. Uh, not a lot of people want to work on the weekends. I can't blame them. I mean, I don't always want to work on the weekends either. But we do have these dedicated guys that will work every other weekend. Um, and like I said, a lot of them don't mind pulling an extra load on the weekend because they know that gives them an extra uh, money on their check. Uh, the weekend work is not stopping. We have to literally tell people we just can't do it because we don't have enough people. Um, mm. And some people, you know, you can say, hey, do you want to work Tuesday through Saturday or Tuesday through Sunday? And like, yeah, man, I'll take off Monday so I can go take care of some stuff that I couldn't take care of on the weekends, you know. And then you have some guys that I literally, we have probably 10 guys that will run for two or three months at a time. No kidding. I promise you. And they are, wow. and they are warriors. Yeah, I didn't think any of those existed anymore. I, it's, uh, I know it <laughs> sounds <laughs> crazy. No, seriously, I, I understand because, you know, when you and I first started or when I first started here, it was you worked every weekend, you know. It was, and this wasn't optional. Uh, so it's been a blessing to these guys that do it now, you know. Yeah, and and I mean, hey, you know, they're getting, it's a, it's about time it rolled back around to the truck drivers. I think so. You know, they're getting. I do. I mean, they're they're getting paid good money. They can yes, make sir. a good living. They yes, can sir. enjoy. They, and uh, we know they are. They're making good money. I mean, these these owner operators with us. I mean, I I look at a few checks here and there too, and I know you do every oh, yeah. week. I mean, what what are they bringing home every week after fuel and after? 
uh, deductions put in their pocket? Well, my my actual drivers uh, are, and it stays consistent this every month uh, and has for years and years. Is thirty two hundred to thirty six hundred dollars every week. I mean, that's for a hopper bottom. That just yeah, and that's probably happen. that's probably what less than twenty five hundred mile. Yeah, or somewhere. Yes, sir. That's pretty good money. It's not bad, especially uh, yeah. Net bring home put in your pocket. That makes a big difference. What about the the uh, trailers? Uh, I know we've been known to have good equipment. Mm-hmm. Do you have any uh, trailer issues or trailer information? Or I mean, I know we keep them looking good. You keep them clean. Yes, sir. Absolutely. These guys take pride in these women. You know, uh, they take pride in what they got because they know if that trailer breaks down, that they're not going to make any money off of it. So um, we've we put a, a pretty big emphasis on hey, if something's going wrong with that right now. You need to know about it. Uh, make sure you're checking your locks. Make sure you're checking your doors because if they open up, that costs you money. It's going to take your escrow or something like that if roofing granules get wet or anything gets happened. I mean, but these people, I mean, <laughs> you just can't say enough about all of our drivers, okay? Um, but these guys on the hopper bottoms, they, they, uh, they're a special breed. I promise you that. They take care of us. Well, and we want them to keep it clean. Yes, sir. I mean, and, uh, well, they look good. Yeah. You know, their trucks look good. They don't want nothing braggly behind them, I promise you. And if something happens, they'll let you know about it. How is your um, communication? Because uh, we need to – should have mentioned this in the beginning, you know, We've got quite a few hoppers out of Oklahoma running yes, out of the Catoosa mm-hmm. uh, uh, Inola Terminal over there. We I don't know what we got fifty over there, maybe yes, sixty, mm-hmm. something like that. We actually just swapped uh, all the dedicated back to me. Okay. Uh, so Seth has I think thirty nine. Um, I, I think that, but that's just recently within this day happened. How how's the communication? Um, work the back and forth between us and them. Um, tends to work out pretty good not like it used to back in the old day when we you know we had people down in uh, louisiana you know it was a little bit more difficult uh technology has helped that quite a bit uh, we get to talk back and forth to messenger and, and on the phone and things like that um a lot of us that's been here for a while justin uh russell myself we sit there and watch the trucks we try to see what they're doing try to keep up with what they're doing make sure that they're taking care of um and Seth, man, you can't say enough about him. He does a great job. Being in an office not next to hearing everything yelled and screamed out, man, that dude is a go-getter, and he makes sure his drivers are taken care of. He's just, he uh, he needs a big pat on the back. What's the, uh, what's the future of the hoppers? I hope uh, more dedicated lanes, honestly. Uh, I'd love to see it continue to grow. I know we've got more opportunities out there that we're just unable to hit right now. Um, but uh, the good thing about it is we will go out there and try to make sure that it's happening. If we can make it happen to where drivers are being taken care of, uh, Oakley's being taken care of, and the customer's being taken care of, man, there ain't nothing we won't do. Uh, I promise you if it means that you get to go home every other day or whatever the case may be, if that's something that we can attract and find, we'll go find it. What's some other areas that you could use some guys that live where they lived? It would be nice to have some more East Coast guys. Not going, I mean, we are turning down loads left and right there. We're turning down loads here every single day because, you know, we just can't get enough trucks up here to Little Rock right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm aware of that. Yes, sir. I, yeah. hear, I hear you guys hollering <laughs> well, at us all the time. The good thing about it is you sit behind us. So, yeah, <laughs> I you mean, we got him. coming. Can you get any more? Yeah, I mean, we're we're trying to do the best we can, but it is a challenge out it there is. for sure. So. It is. And, it, you know, our, our drivers are recruiting very well, so that helps out tremendously. Yeah, it does. That That's I mean, that's where we get all of them. Right. The majority of them. And uh, we encourage them to, to start their own YouTube channel. Right. To, you know, do that kind of uh, recruiting. It helps a lot. I mean, we got a lot of guys doing that. Well, yeah. no, we don't either. We've got two or three doing that, right. and we need a bunch more. Well, it would be nice if we could get like Shante or somebody to do something like that. It would be, yeah. it would be amazing. You know, I know when Rob Holly started that, it really, yeah, it helped a whole bunch. You know, the thing about it is, is, uh, and and everybody's heard this on before on podcast, but it when you're looking for that right person. 
it's not easy to find and no. we and we uh we have standards that we got to meet yes, that sir. we're going to stick to yeah and look for that best one out there and i tell you what that's uh, another thing i think our drivers pretty much uh, love about us is they have they have standards themselves um so you know they want to be represented very well also and whomever they're going to try to recruit in here they want them to represent also so well good discussion man anything else you'd like to add about the hopper division no i i don't know of anything else um we appreciate everything y'all do of course uh, especially in recruiting department uh, i know y'all getting beat right now um these podcasts i believe help tremendously uh like i said i've been here so long i've seen us do a lot of a, a lot of stuff yeah i've seen us on the other side of the scale where we yelled and screamed and we said no you go get find something else to do you know um that change has been amazing just for me myself you know in the way i am at home uh so it's uh it it kind of translates into our owner operators now too so it's uh it's a big blessing well it's a it's a it's good to have somebody that's been here 18 years and you got some uh you know there's a lot of seniority over there with you and russell yes, and sir. justin jolly and mm-hmm. these other guys really coming on now because yes, you got sir. Jackson helping you and William. Yeah, they those are guys amazing. are coming on doing yeah. great. And so the Hopper, I think, has got a, a great future ahead of it. We, oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, I mean, it, the the potential is there, the opportunity's there. We just got to we got to keep meeting it. Uh, we got to keep so keep getting some owner operators yeah. in here to do it. So you guys bring some more people, please. Yeah, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I sure appreciate you hanging out with me well, and doing this, you. taking time out of your work work day because I Anytime. know it's in the middle of the work day, so uh, let's get it done. Yeah. But, and I appreciate everybody listening to the Oakley podcast. Uh, I really do. Uh, this is something that, you know, from time to time we struggle coming up with stuff for you guys, but uh, we, we want to keep this going the best we can because it has become a great communication tool, uh, retention tool and recruiting tool for Oakley Trucking and, and more so retention than recruiting. We we did this, when we started this podcast, we did it to communicate with our owner operators. It, it was not, we wasn't doing it for a recruiting tool. Oh, right. It's turned into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sure has by accident. We did it to, you know, because we wanted to be able to communicate with our owner operators and try to get them the information that was going on right now with Oakley and right. some ways we could tell them. So it's just been a great tool. And so please spread the word about it. If if uh, you know some of our owner operators that are not listening to it or watching it on YouTube and they don't know how, man, try to get them uh, clued in on it because we're going to pass along good information about it about oakley uh, check out last week where we talked about the company party coming up in october oh, yeah, a lot of good nice. info Glad that's a lot of good back. info on there so that's gonna be good so appreciate everybody listening y'all be sure to like subscribe uh check us out on youtube and if you got any input on what you want to hear or talk about let me know and we'll talk to you next week thanks Thank you.